Welcome to the values and goals of theory towards the building blocks of theory, Learning Outcome 2.1, Theme 2, Theoretical Approaches to Mass Communication. We're on page 103. Today's class, we're going to learn what is theory, the value of theory, and the goals of theory, in, as well as the building blocks of all theory, which relates to ontology, epistemology, purpose, and focus. And make sure that you have some popcorn with you and settle in because this does relate to your task 2 work in terms of purpose and focus concepts. Let's begin. What is theory and what is the value of theory? So in terms of theory, they teach us how to describe, interpret, understand, evaluate, and predict a phenomenon. It is an interdisciplinary field that takes on a lot of different disciplines, and the development of this discipline um, it does evolve into effect theory. So when we learn about media when it comes to theory, we're learning about the effect theories in terms of the effect of media on personal behavior, as well as the fix of media on society and culture. It does begin with assumptions about the power of media and then it's developed into assumptions about society and humanity. It started off with studying with behavior of you know, the audience and how they receive media, but it's now developed into a critical perspective and a more an analytical approach. We also need to consider the impact of how media has shaped due to ICT, which is Information Communication Technologies, and the information society and globalization. Theory does teach us skills in our everyday realities, how to solve a problem, how to interpret that problem, and how to predict and decide on a solution. Theory building um, skills are in ways of dealing with reality and can be applied to different scenarios such as relationship finances. So this allows us a nice little introduction to what is theory which is something that's going to help us understand something, it can help us evaluate something, predict something, or sort of measure objectively something. So in this case, we're just going to give a little introduction to it. And for a theoretical task, it usually is going to describe something as accurate as possible. It's going to interpret it from different perspectives, evaluate those different opinions, and predict possible outcomes. There is a definition here by Woods on page 104, which says that theory can be defined as a human account of what something is, how it works, what it produces or causes to happen, and how that something can be changed if necessary. In a sense, we are all theorizing abilities and um, beings here, because when we tell someone something that happens, we are going to describe what exactly happened, how we reacted to it, what we should have done, and something that maybe we can solve and theorize about. However, we need to also understand that theory cannot be objective or, or true. It can't be fixed. That's what they mean by that. If I give you a theory about something, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily the truth. It's exactly the way it is fixed like that. The, th the thing with theory is, is that someone can always add different point of views about the same thing. As a theory evolves over the years, it could say that, you know what, the sky is blue. And then as research and years go by, someone could have a different theory and start to add to that. Therefore, theory can have a different point of view and we can always theorize about different things. And each new theory will add something, an aspect to it, to contribute to a better understanding of the original theory. So let's circle back to exactly how the goals of theory work. It is to describe something or explain how something works understand instead of describing and expand that will lead to that understanding, predict and control the prediction of how something works and how it can be controlled, and then we can also do reformation which is to describe, explain and understand with the purpose of also predicting and controlling that can lead to changing something overall. Now let's try to apply this to a example in the textbook on page 105 which is that to say that the something is the media's portrayal of race. This is theory we can describe how the media report race, explain why the media report race as they do. From this description and explanation, come to understanding why the media portray um, race as they do and why that reporting can be predicted and controlled. And on the basis of this, understand suggest ways of reforming the way the media is reporting race. We're going to skip over to 3.3.3, which is the building blocks of theory, which take place in terms of ontology, epistemology, purpose, and focus. When it comes to a sort of 
a little bit of an introduction into this. The theory about something will depend on how you see something. That's ontology. How you investigate something with a more scientific method, maybe, epistemology, and your purpose and focus. Ontology. How does one formulate a theory? It begins with questions about a specific phenomenon in the mind of theorists. In the textbook, we have the example that we're going to be working with in terms of all the different building blocks, which is, do the media frame people and events to influence public opinion in a specific direction? So I'm going to read that out again. This is the example we'll be using. Do the media frame people and events to influence public opinion in a specific direction? To answer this, we would need to deal with the humanity aspect in ontology, which is the products of thinking behavior and the theorist view of human nature, which take upon deterministic view or determinism and liberal view, which would be humanism. Please look on page 107 in table 3.1. So to answer this question, we'd need to consider is human behavior determinism, which is human behavior is governed by forces beyond the individual's control. This is to say that the individual does not have control over what the media is portraying out there. So the answer to that question would be yes. Media does have an effect on how and an influence on people and how it's framing people and events in a specific direction because people do not have control over it. It's governed by forces beyond their control. Therefore, we'd say that the media does have control and people, in terms of editors and journalists, have little control in that aspect. Humanism. People have free will. They make their own choices of how to act. And in this case, we'd say, you know, in terms of the media framing people and events to influence public opinion in a specific direction, it may. People may be able to be persuaded or influenced in a specific direction, but they can think for themselves. So what do you think in terms of this ontology approach? Do When you think of that question that's been framed, do you think that when it comes to human behavior, those forces of media can sometimes be beyond the individual's control? Or do you think that people have free will and can make their own choices about their own behavior? Okay, something to think about. Let's go on to epistemology. Epistemology looks at the science of knowledge, those who believe in objective truth, and those who believe in subjective experience. We have in a scenario here at the bottom that you can read through, but once again, we're going back to that original question. And if you turn to page 108, we have table 3.2, which is looking at the exact same question. So they look at firstly, the objective investigation. Reality is something outside of the human mind, independent of feelings, and you can theorize objectively and set aside your values, your beliefs, your personal feelings, because it's all about the scientific method. The second one is all about subjective investigation. It does not believe in objective truth. There's multiple views of reality, and no view is more valid than the other. And this takes on a more critical and phenomenological role there. So in this case, do the media frame people and events, I'd have to do a scientific sort of investigation to it and then determine that yes or no, the media can have influence on the public. Or secondly, I'd, I would have to investigate based off human experience and sort of do a qualitative study, then a quantitative study and scientific one, and start to ask people if they have been influenced in a particular direction and go upon that because there are multiple views of how someone could see that. So which one do you would you choose when it comes to this? Do you believe in using a more a um, scientific method of an investigation that's objective or that humans can have a subjective experience and explain that in terms of a study. Next we look at purpose which is on page 108 to 109 and it's looking at universalism which is that the purpose is to generate universal laws of behavior. In this section we look at what is the purpose of my theory about the media's framing of people and events. So what I want you to understand from this is, in your task two, you will be asked to determine the purpose and the focus of your the theory you will choose later in your learning outcome 2.2 work and onwards in theme two of the work. So you'll have to determine, in terms of purpose, is your theory based off 
universal laws about the law is how the media frames people and events and can be described as universal? Or is it about discovering patterns of human behavior, which is situationism? So once again, let's unpack this a little bit more. So what is the purpose of my theory when it comes to this question? It is to discover and formulate universal laws about the media, and that is that laws can be applied about how the media works, and it functions this way or that way? Or is it to determine the media's behavior under certain, certain circumstances, and that is to say that it does have sort of certain conditions and has a pattern of human behavior? Lastly is focus, and focus is looking at when it comes to this, should we look at the actual behavior that's being portrayed by people and this behavior is the determined in the focus of that theory or is it how people behave, which is the meaning of the behavior is the focus, is humanism. So in your theory, you also need to determine the focus, which is that does my focus look at the actual behavior, the observable, the observable behavior, the concrete behavior, what people do or say is relevant? Or does it look at the meaning behind that behavior, looking at why people behave in certain ways? Turning to page table 3.4 on page 110, you can look at that a bit. So do the media frame people sit in a way? I have to look at how the media behave in terms of how they've done the actual behavior, how they've behaved, or the meaning of why they would have behaved that way, which is humanism. If you still feel like you're struggling to understand the section, we have a summary of the building blocks on table 3.5, page 110. We have completed learning outcome 2.1. Remember to take down notes on sections you do not understand and see your lesson plan. Complete those textbook and lesson plan activities. We're going to be moving on to the next section, which will conclude learning unit 2. Remember to take down those notes and ask your lecturer any questions that you don't understand.